Yeah, I think it is actually. Yeah. Opening statement? <coughs> uh, uh, questions. Like after the Lopez trade, that was earlier in the day, were you still confident you were going to be able to get something else done? How aggressive was that pursuit? Of uh, other opportunities later in the day? Yeah, we tried um, all day long to, to do all manner of things. Um, the, the trade deadline, I think the way that it um, operates in uh, the business nowadays is it's, it's a unique uh, opportunity and window to um, pursue value. And, and you know, certainly we, we did that um, with the couple of trades that we made all, um, from our major league roster, but um, we did explore um, options of, of bringing major league players in and ultimately just, you know, we weren't um, other than the, the Phillips acquisition that we made at the end of the day, we, we didn't um, see any opportunities that we wanted to uh, execute. Was that because you didn't want to give up certain guys? I mean, how was it just the volume of it? I think that um, I, we, I'm, I'm so uh, pleased and proud of where this team is at um, and where this organization is at. I mean, I can't imagine a healthier spot um, than we're in right now with this young group playing the way they're playing, pitching the way that we're pitching, um, the farm system that we have. We've got six top 100 prospects, arguably. We've got a deep system. Um, it just got deeper, especially on the pitching side the last couple of days. We've got a scouting and player development and coaching apparatus that is humming. Um, we've got a lot going for us, and this is a big plan to keep this organization very healthy. And um, while I'm super excited about 2022 and what's ahead of us and our chances, um, we're going to continue with the plan of building for this uh, a, a bright, long future in the American League East. And I think we're right there. I think that um, it's it's lift off from here for, for this team. And um, I think the decisions that we made the last couple of days were difficult in that regard, but we saw opportunities to bring starting pitching into the organization. Um, we've got a program running where we bring players in, we see something we like, we give them information, we coach them up, um, and you know that's the way that successful teams run themselves these days, especially um, with our market size, and it's going to be the way we have to do, but I, I, I see a homegrown team that we want to build around um, and supplement, and I think that um, that's going to start this year. There's a lot of help coming from the minor leagues, and it's going to start this year, and um, we're just going to keep adding from this point forward. Mike, you mentioned the pride you have in this current team. What prompted you to come down here? When is any part of that delivering that message directly to them? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I did talk to uh, a number of our, our core players this morning directly. I wanted to, as I'm emphasizing right now to the public, uh, there's a plan in place. It's going exceptionally well. We've got a very bright future ahead of us. I don't want um, us uh, utilizing the opportunity of the trade deadline the way we did the last couple of days speak to um, the fact that this is a team that is going to have to be reckoned with from now and this point forward in our division. Um, we're going to have to um, scout and develop and manage the roster a certain way to, to maintain it that way. We've seen our competitors do that um, and um, we're there. We're, we're, we're at that point and so I, we're, we want to win as many games as we can possibly win. We want to get into a wild card. Um, but it's my job to manage the organization as a whole from top to bottom. And um, at times, there are opportunities that, that um, feel like um, a step back. But in the big picture, it's a step forward for the entire organization. And that's the position I'm in. So I came here. Um, you know, I hadn't been with the team for a while. It's not ideal when your team's uh, on the road during the um, trade deadline, but that's the luck of the draw. And, you know, we can't bring the whole front office to a hotel room. There's just too many people involved with the trade deadline. So we stayed set up in Baltimore, um, you know, was able to talk to Trey and Jorge on, on uh, video uh, the last couple of days. But I wanted to, to talk to some of these guys in person and watch the team play. Were you concerned at all that the message was being sent to them before you conveyed it, that, you know, you're not concentrating on 2022? I, I, yeah, uh, of course it was a concern. I, I said leading into the trade deadline that there were a lot of things that I had to take into account uh, with this trade deadline, and I did take them into account. And these are very weighty decisions, and they're not easy, and, and you know maybe we don't get them right either. Right? But um, there, there's so much that goes into this. Um, I, I knew that 
anything's possible when your team is young and talented. And I knew that something like this, this team coming together the way it has this season was possible, but it definitely wasn't something that we were banking on happening. Um, and now that we're here, it makes it so much easier to plan going forward to supplement this group. And we're gonna be doing that immediately. Um, but I, we saw good opportunities to bring good uh, starting pitching prospects into the organization, and we took advantage of those opportunities the last couple of days with some teams that um, are, um, you know, either winning their division or running away with their division, and and wanted that help urgently, and were willing to meet the, the acquisition cost. Was that the entire thought process with Jorge? I mean, he, he could have been here for two more years, but to bring in the talent, the pipeline, is that is that what it came down to? Yeah, I think uh, it, it, with with him um, um, having a couple of years of, of contractual status left, definitely made the the uh, calculus as to whether or not to make that trade uh, more complicated. Obviously, um, I think you know, the the bluntest way I can put this is that um, you know r r relief pitchers um, are are more. Um, leveraged at the trade deadline in terms of their their value sometimes the teams you've got a, a team like minnesota that i don't know if they're in first place today but you know they, they very well might be they've been battling back and forth for the division lead they needed bullpen help um, we've got a tremendous bullpen and a deep bullpen and guys that can step in and um, you know when we're able to get four pitching prospects particularly kate povich is somebody that we're very very high on internally um, and think, you know, we've got a possible front of the rotation starter and a guy that's, um, you know, going to be in the mid minors here um, before the end of the year. Um, we, we do it. And there's other ways to, to, um, to build bullpens. And we've just got to be opportunistic and smart and do good scouting and do good coaching the way we've done and, um, you know, try to backfill Jorge. It's not going to be easy. Mike, you kind of hinted. Do you expect? Try to make significant additions to this team this offseason. I do. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be signing players this winter. I'm I'm very excited about it. You've run into guys who were a member of the Houston organization while you were there. Guys that sometimes you've selected. So what was it about Brett Phillips to bring him to Baltimore? Well, um, I, his reputation around the league certainly is is well known as as a, a wonderful teammate and clubhouse guy. But we brought him in uh, for his defensive profile. Um, his left-handed uh, bat and his uh, plus speed. So um, I don't think characterizing him as a bench player is fair. It's more of like an outfield utility player. Um, but I think that um, Brandon's going to be able to plug him into spots where he can impact the game because he's got um, uh, some tools that, when deployed at the right place in the right time, kind of make him an impact uh, player. So I think he's a nice fit for the bench. We got a 13 player bench now because of the rules and um, I think having a um, diverse uh, left-handed hitting plus running defensive outfielder um, will fit well. What was the consideration in bringing him in rather than giving someone like Ezeon Diaz an extended opportunity or Kyle Stowers possibly as well? Um, I think those guys may get opportunities here in the, the near future. I mean, Yusniel, um, you know, he's not uh, putting up the numbers in AAA that we'd like to see to really say, hey, you're ready to go hit in the big leagues for a month and see what happens. And so I'd like to see him perform better in AAA. I'm happy that he kind of got up here and made the major leagues. And he's a great kid, and he's been through a lot. Um, and uh, it's been a disappointing couple of years for him. But we need to see somebody um, graduate AAA before we can just hand them a job in uh, the majors. So you know, we made the trade. We needed a position player. Um, our roster, um, there's limited options, and so uh, now that Phillips is here, we did option uh, using the L back down, but I hope he comes back up. And um, Stowers is somebody that, um, you know, is a top 10 prospect for us. Um, we got him that little taste in Toronto. He's having a really good year in AAA. Is he 100% a, a ready? I, I don't know, but he's certainly somebody that we are getting into the mode where we have daily discussions about, about bringing him up, and it could happen at any time. Deal. Um, he's he's doing fine. Uh, actually, Brandon and I talked to him this morning um, and wanted to encourage him that um, you know he's we're counting on him. Um, I think that uh, as expected, he's had a real up and down experience in AAA, and I think that's the type of talent he is. You know, he's been inconsistent, but he's immensely gifted and immensely um, equipped to be a 
great big leaguer, and he's right there. And so I do plan on and hope on him helping this team this year. Um, but we need him to be consistent in AAA, and he's he's learning. You know, he he understands, um, and um, I think he's going to be all the better for having these last two poor starts um, and adjusting to them. How much does stats go in with that for him? I mean, how much are you looking at that versus just him being there and getting more experience? Uh, yeah, a, a lot. I mean, I think his stats are are pros and cons. He's got great strikeout numbers. Um, his walk numbers are not great. His ERA and his home run totals are not great, but Overall, he's do, the, the the way that he's striking people out with the flashes of good starts we're getting from him. His um, AAA performance, I think, bodes well uh, in terms of you know what he's going to be doing in the future in the big leagues. He's doing well in AAA, but it's just in a more inconsistent fashion than I think he or we would like to see. Mike, going back to your guys' efforts to to add at the deadline, how how disappointing is it given where you guys are in the standings that you weren't able to do? I would have liked to um, done it uh, if it made sense, um, but you know, it, it, we, we're, this is not something um, obviously where we're putting all of our chips of all this work that we've been doing around the organization for the past three and a half, four years into the second half of 2022. This is a decade-long window that I think is opening up, and um, I couldn't be more excited about it for Baltimore, for the Orioles, for these guys. Um, and it was uh, the most important thing to us that, that we prioritize this long window that we feel is ahead of us uh, among all other considerations. But um, as I said, this, uh, this doesn't mean we're not going to give it our all here the rest of the way. This doesn't mean that help isn't on the way. It's going to come from inside the organization. And um, I, think, I think these guys are going to give people fits in the second half. I'm sure not signing McLean is disappointing for you. But is that connected at all? With going ahead and getting more pitching, um, the fact that you you know you had a high pick that did not sign. Um, no, I, I can't say that that um, it is. I, um, I, it is disappointing anytime you don't sign a draft pick. Um, we're getting a pick back next year. Uh, it's unfortunate. Um, uh, we just we you know we try to uh, get the most out of our drafts. It's very very important to the Orioles um, that we, that we draft well, and I I think we've done that. Um, we'll see, but. Um, you know, we're, we're, we treat the draft as uh, a separate thing than, than sort of roster building. We, we use it to bring talent into the organization. Um, I think that um, as we have had in a lot of trades, you know, going back to Bradish or others, um, you know, we view that uh, trades, bringing guys in that have kind of started to check boxes in the minor leagues, stayed healthy for a couple of years um, as a good opportunity to bring pitching talent into the organization. And so that's what we did at the trade deadline. Is there any update on Grayson at all, how he's doing? Yeah, he's throwing. Uh, it's going well. Um, I think he's out to like 120 feet um, on flat ground, and he feels really good. I still do not have a timetable. Um, but I, I, I would probably increase our desire to get him onto a game mound before the year's over than at the initial time that I made the announcement of his injury. I think we're hoping for that. Mike, back to McLean, there was a report that you guys had some kind of medical disagreement with him. Is there anything you can share about that? No, we just, we didn't, we weren't able to make an agreement with the player um, and it's unfortunate and I'd never, I never like to take a pick high and not be able to sign him and I'm, I'm, uh, uh, not happy about it. It's it's um, it's too bad. Do you have a date circle for holidays MCL debut? I do not, um, but we should be having some some draft pick debuts here, like imminently. Um, I don't have a, a date for Jackson though. And Matt Harvey, any sense on when we might be seeing him here? Well, um, he's pitching pretty well in AAA, but our our group up here is pitching pretty well too, and um, I think that uh, he's definitely on the radar screen for this year. Another guy that we're talking about a lot, but. Um, you know, we're above 500 and we're scrapping and clawing and these guys are pitching well. So to, to me, I think our day-to-day -day major league needs are going to drive the bus for any, any call-ups. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys.